Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and this is going to be a relatively short one. Let's get it right out of the way to begin with. An assault rifle is a select fire rifle, which means you can fire either semi-automatic or fully automatic, or burst. Uh, burst is a form of fully automatic, that uses a detachable magazine and is chambered for an intermediate cartridge, which means something larger than a pistol cartridge, but smaller than a traditional full power rifle cartridge. I didn't think this was really that big a deal, but I did a short video from Enforce Tech a couple weeks ago about the Beretta uh, New Assault Rifle Project, and got a remarkable number of comments in that video from people decrying my use of the term assault rifle. Well, assault rifle is a legitimate term, it's a technically recognized term, and it's a term that has utility and that we do not need to just avoid using. So. Uh, this term was coined originally by the Germans with the Sturmgewehr 44, or well, yeah, Sturmgewehr 44. The MP43 is the same gun, but they uh, renamed it the Sturmgewehr, which does translate to assault rifle. There are going to be a few people who are going to complain that it actually means storm rifle, which doesn't directly literally translate into assault necessarily. But I would point out that the Germans are not the only one to have actually used this term. And if we look to the French, we have the FAMAS, which literally stands for Fusil d'Assault, Rifle of Assault, made by Moss. So this is a recognized term. Uh, it is a military term. It essentially defines a modern military rifle. So uh, just a quick back and forth here. Uh, submachine gun, this is not an assault rifle, even if it's fully automatic, because it uses pistol ammunition. A semi-automatic rifle that meets the other two criteria, like a semi-auto AR-15, does not meet the criteria that is not an assault rifle. A full auto, let's say AK, detachable mags, intermediate size caliber, and uh, select fire, that does meet the definition, that is an assault rifle. A, let's say an FND uh, model BAR, that is not an assault rifle, because while it is selective fire, and it does use detachable max magazines, it uses a full power rifle cartridge. Now the definition of full power versus intermediate power can be a little bit fuzzy at the edges. There are people who will look at something like the Fedorov and say, well it's in 6.5 Japanese, which technically has about the same uh, energy, uh, ballistic energy, as some of the larger intermediate cartridges. So maybe the, the Fedorov is the world's first assault rifle, even though it wasn't defined as such by its developers. I don't think we really need to get into that discussion here today. This is really more about what is an assault rifle? Is that term a valid term? So the reason that people think that this is not a valid term goes to essentially the late 1980s and then especially 1994 when in the United States there was an assault weapon prohibition passed. Now it was a ban with a sunset, so it only lasted 10 years, and in 2004 it went poof and disappeared and is no longer in force. But what that uh, legislation did was legally define not assault rifles, but assault weapons. And it did so uh, with both, well, all with rifles, with shotguns, and with handguns. So it defined assault pistols and assault shotguns, and I suppose assault rifles, but in the, fr in the, the context of an assault weapon. And the definition in that law was not the same as the technically recognized definition of an assault rifle. In that law, essentially what they were trying to do was a blanket prohibition on firearms that had a military appearance. And so the elements that defined assault in that legislation were things like bayonet lugs, grenade launchers, folding stocks, threaded muzzles, barrel shrouds, uh, and that sort of thing no relation to the technical definition of assault rifle. What they were trying to do is take a scary military phrase and apply it to not scary, well, or potentially scary appearing, civilian firearms that they wanted to restrict or prohibit. So what we still have today as a holdover from that legislation are a group of people for whom using the term assault was seen as a surrender to, or an acknowledgement of, gun control legislation. And so those are most of the comments that I see in that Beretta New Assault Rifle Project video, or people who are saying you shouldn't use the word assault because that's surrendering to the people who want to ban guns. 
In reality, I would say it's exactly the opposite. We should use the term assault rifle in its technically proper context, because to do otherwise would be to essentially surrender use of language to people who are deliberately misusing it in an attempt to pass legislative agendas. So I will continue to use the phrase assault rifle when it's technically appropriate, because a lot of the guns that I film here are in fact fully automatic or burst firing guns with detachable box magazines in uh, intermediate calibers. And sometimes they're filmed in the US, sometimes they're filmed outside the US, they're generally military rifles, and I think it's really important to recognize the distinction between an assault rifle and any other form of semi-automatic rifle, typically civilian semi-automatic rifles. So that's today's rather bland rant, but I just saw so many comments about uh, using that phrase that I thought we should clear it up a bit. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one, thanks for watching. And by the way, if you want to see an example of an assault rifle, a legitimate assault rifle, head on over to any one of my other channels today, uh, most notably History of Weapons War streaming app, or Patreon, Player, or Floatplane, and you can see my full auto firing video on a SIG 540, which is a 5.56 caliber select fire uh, military pattern assault rifle. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, thanks for watching.